Welcome back. Well, here we are. What an amazing three days. If you allow me to share some of my impressions, it would be that this conference was one that anyone from any background will be able to join and find something of interest. It was accessible, inspiring, and exciting. This year's Diverse Congress program highlighted the many ways in which modeling and simulation continues to evolve and make positive contributions to our lives. We were deliberate in our formulation of the theme, Simulation Navigating Uncertain Futures, to raise the profile of modeling and simulation and to demonstrate its primacy as a tool in dealing with the existential issues facing our world. I believe in this, we've succeeded with this conference. We've been able to offer speakers and keynotes addressing issues ranging from world pandemics to geopolitical issues and global risks. We're facing an age where the trust once assumed for science has undergone erosion and is under attack by populist governments, skeptics and conspiracy theorists. It's contingent upon us, therefore, those involved in modeling and simulation to ensure that our work is relevant, accessible, credible, and increasingly able to be fielded quickly. In this conference, we heard a lot about epidemiological issues. And with regard to these issues, scientists usually debate and resolve questions like the reinfection one over years, sometimes decades, in conference halls and academic journals. The urgency of the pandemic has warped that scientific process and put its accelerated results on display. Early in the pandemic, the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and World Health Organization both emphasized that the virus primarily spread through close contact. Social distancing guidelines were based on the assumption that droplets of viral particles from sick people who were coughing or sneezing traveled only short distances in the air before falling to the ground. And health officials said not to wear masks. In an interview with 60 Minutes on March 8, 2020, Anthony Fauci, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases Director said, there's no reason to be walking around with a mask. These strident remarks would linger in the minds of many and foment distrust of future public health guidelines. What came next was an academic debate with real world consequences. By the end of March, some scientists began pointing to emerging evidence that the virus could spread through microscopic aerosols that linger in the air and drift across rooms more easily than larger virus laden droplets that social distancing um, measures were based on. In common parlance, the new data suggested that the virus was airborne, but admitting that would have fright would have frightening implications for businesses, hospitals, and any places with lots of people indoors. So this is something that we all need to get together and be behind science. We, we use modeling and simulation for scientific, scientific purposes. And it's something that we need to keep in mind. In other areas, the need for agile training methods and systems was highlighted as a key factor for defense speakers as they, as they strive to prepare us for constantly shifting geopolitical circumstances where threats may move from asymmetric to symmetric and back again in rapid succession. What is becoming clear as we move into an uncertain future, that modeling and simulation will attain greater prominence and come under greater scrutiny. The age of the simulationist is coming and we need to prepare for it. We need to concede that there will be, broad, there will be a broader need for this type of person, one which moves beyond the technologies and focuses on the processes, ways of properly defining the problem and properly communicating the results. This all needs to be compelling, rapid, and accurate. It needs to be acceptable to the public. This is vital if it is to be a tool in our defense against the existential threats. We in simulation need to work together to make this happen. We heard from Professor Bennett, who told us about the lack of agreement amongst modelers and their approaches to the pandemic, pandemic modeling. In our work, we all follow the cycle of defining what is to be simulated, running the simulation, then extracting the relevant data we should engage more across disciplines. It still occurs too infrequ infrequently, and I still see people cluster in their respective areas of these conferences. We need to foster the common aspects of our overarching domain of simulation. Engaging through simulation Australasia is one way to make this happen, and I encourage you all to get involved. Now, Philip will run through the formal thank yous, but I would just like to informally express my deep gratitude to those who assisted in making this event possible. Thank you to my co-convener, Deanna, for her enthusiasm, optimism, and unending string of great ideas. Heartfelt thanks go to the organizing and scientific committees for their enthusiastic and tireless support in making the program come together. I'd like to thank the association specialists for helping bring this event together, particularly June, the communications, the website, the events platform, 
and enthusiastic support all in a professional smiling package. To the chairs, we had no problem at all in receiving enthusiastic volunteers and what a fabulous job you did. To our keynotes, Senator Molan and Professor Bennett, whom we were honored to host, to all of the speakers for their varied and insightful perspectives and to all of the delegates for helping bring this event to a reality. To the whole collective group for your congeniality, it impressed me that the discussion and questions were so friendly and supportive. Thanks, and I would now like to hand over to the co-convener, Deanna. Thanks, Fred. And uh, I guess I'll continue on with the, my appreciation of thanks. Um, of course, thank you also to our sponsor, Laidell, and um, our other um, exhibitors, because the support from industry financially is, is very important. And I feel that this week, perhaps I've been a bit remiss in, in acknowledging my gratitude for that sponsorship from Laidell. Um, I know that health is such a big important part of this community and I want to thank um, certainly our colleagues on the organising committee who brought that energy from the health focus um, as well as the games community to add to what was the original Simtech conference and I think in the five years that I've been away um, I have seen this event transform from um, perhaps three separate communities to one big transdisciplinary intersectional community where people are recognising the value in collaboration and just the, the strength and the diversity that we have as a community. That would be my biggest takeaway from this event. And I think in, uh, in that, the session that or the conversations that we've been having about ethics and diversity and professionalization and standards um, one of the things we keep coming back to is this question about is there a need for us to formalize um, a, a proper way of doing something or a proper way of defining how something happens and i'd like to leave a question sitting at the end of this and i go back to um, kelly menzel's comment in the uh, diversity panel on day one where she gave some examples of having given her students access to her office and her lab and and really I think challenged or questioned the need to have highly structured and regulated approaches to do things. Now I know that's anathema to some people in environments where that's really really important and uh, and I also respect that and the question I raise is to say how do we think about or how might we as a community think about the need for these things and when it's needed and when in actual fact maybe it becomes a barrier to growing our community and growing the adoption of simulation. I don't have an answer. It's a provocation I think for the next 12 months as we start to unpack some of the discussion. I'd like to thank uh, all of the people who've been so actively involved in the conversations, in the meetups, in the chats, asking questions. I think that for me has been the most inspiring part of this conference. The speakers are always great. And I thank all of the speakers for coming in and giving their time uh, and their knowledge and sharing for us to, uh, to learn from. Uh, and I really, and I thank the delegates for engaging in those, in those presentations. Uh, thank Simulation Australasia Board uh, for continuing to support the Congress. It's a big undertaking and it's not without risk. And uh, I know there's a lot of hard conversations happen behind the scenes, sometimes about um, de decisions we need to take. Uh, so thank you for putting your faith and your trust in us uh, to bring the Congress together this year. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, TAS as the Association Specialist and in particular June, I echo uh, Fred's comments about June's support in, in an ever smiling package, which I think is wonderful. June, thank you very much. And of course, my co-convener, Fred, uh, partner in crime. And uh, it's been really nice being back, working with you again, um, tolerating the Great Ideas Committee of which I've probably become the chairman. Um, and uh, and I've, I've had a wonderful time this week and, and I think it's been a great success. And I say thank you to everybody. And from there, and Fred, I've got an old version of the uh, closing ceremony agenda. I must apologise. I think it's over to Phil. It is indeed. Thanks, Diana. Uh, so, as Fred and Diana have said, we've come to the end of three wonderful days. Presentations, panels, workshops, masterclasses, all highlighting the theme that was carefully chosen 
um, navigating uncertain futures. It's always good when the simulation community gets together and shares our experience and skills. The coverage, the ASC has covered such a wide range simulations at all levels of interaction from the needs of the individual through the needs of the entire world. There's been important sessions, as Deanna mentioned, on diversity and inclusion and ethics, what it means to call simulation a profession. Despite, or in some cases because of COVID-19, the simulation community is moving ahead rapidly to build that better world uh, that we have in our vision. The breadth of simulation in use today flies well under the radar uh, for most people, and yet the skills, techniques and simulations we use are critical to a prosperous future internationally. Without opportunities to share our knowledge and broader recognition of simulation as a profession, it's unlikely we'll be able to influence the world of the future to avoid the mistakes of the past. We're a volunteer organisation and the Australasian Simulation Congress uh, has only occurred because of the many hours contributed by, by members, uh, by people like Fred and Deanna and many others. So I'd like to thank the entire uh, conference team who've done a wonderful job to put on such a great virtual exchange, but actually it was a real exchange um, on a virtual platform of knowledge and skills. So if we could uh, have the, the slide up, I'd like to thank Fred, Deanna, Anjan Nawid, Laurel Bowditch, Kelly Britt, Belinda Judd, Kathleen Yin, Tane Ryle, Fiona Love and Adrian Webb. So those are the, the organisers uh, for, for this great event. I would also like to thank all of the invited speakers, uh, the workshop presenters, the panel session organisers, masterclass conveners and the presenters who all gave their time generously to be here this week. We greatly appreciate the insights you've shared. And of course, the delegates, the conversations that have been going on on the platform have been fantastic. And uh, I, I guess that's one of the advantages of, of having a virtual conference is that those conversations can keep going. Um, thanks also to Lyndall Baker, who's our uh, admin assistant working even further in the background, um, coordinating things behind the scenes. Um, and to, to Nell June and Christina and the team from the association specialists. Uh, it's been the first time that we've worked with that group and, and uh, I don't think it will be the last. There are professional conference organizers. And I'd also like to thank our sponsors. Uh, this Congress wouldn't happen without support um, from people like uh, our platinum sponsor uh, and exclusive award dinner sponsor, Laidale Australia, New Zealand, and our conference supporter, Real Response. So as I mentioned, we're finishing the synchronous part of the conference, the live part, um, but the opportunity for, for learning from our, our peers, from our presenters and speakers will continue. So one of the benefits of, of the online uh, nature of this event is the ability to view all of the, the sessions uh, that would have been missed in a traditional conference in parallel, where you can only go to one. Um, and all the conversations uh, that have been uh, carried on will, will remain in place. Um, so you get the chance to, to view the sessions for experts beyond your normal comfort zone in simulation. Um, you'll shortly receive a survey to provide feedback on the Congress and, and the organising committee and the board is really interested to hear your views on, on what you enjoyed, what you found useful and your suggestions for improvement. We also want to hear your suggestion on themes, speakers, presentation topics and more. So please share your thoughts with us. Um, the presentations and the discussions from the Congress will be available for a period of three months on the Hoover platform. Um, and uh, we'll send around details to delegates uh, when the video uh, themselves will be available for the presentations. Next, I'm very excited to announce that our next simulation Congress will be held in Adelaide in August 2023. So we've been working with the Adelaide Convention Bureau and the Adelaide Convention Centre, who have generously agreed to provide some support uh, to Simulation Australasia to hold the Congress in Adelaide in 2023, 25 and 27. Um, but we're not leaving the stage for two years. We'll hold a series of smaller events during the year next year, hopefully many of them in person, to keep these conversations and collaborations going. Mm. Simulation Australasia has run many events through COVID, including the Sim Cafe and the Ash Symposium that was only last week. 
So we'll continue to run events in the coming year and would encourage you to join as many as, as you can to learn and share. On this topic as well, we'd like suggestions on formats, topics, um, maybe specific industry groups. Um, and if you'd like to help organise any of these, please get in touch with us at admin at simost.com. Uh, we've got the next Sim Cafe coming up there. You can see on the screen that's next Friday at one o'clock. And our speakers are Gemma Dabowski and Isaac Hain, um, who are the directors of the 2021 Australian Crisis Simulation Summit, which brought together 70 of Australia's future security experts. So don't miss that one. Um, and a quick reminder for members that the CIMOST AGM is on next Tuesday at 11 o'clock Sydney time. The meeting will be held on Zoom, so you need to register and is open to all members. If you haven't received information on, on nominations for the board or registration, it could be because you aren't a member. So it's not too late to join. So um, please, please join us there. And for those who are members, um, please make sure you take to the time to vote. Uh, for the open members of good standing positions. Um, and uh, don't forget to look at the proceedings on the system. Uh, there's the list of previous SIM cafes available as well as the proceedings for the conference in terms of the abstracts in book format. So that's all from me. Um, once again, thank you for joining us. I hope you found it useful. Please um, look out for the survey um, and hope to see you soon. So bye for now. Yanu. <laughs>